on the station working for you. This is WRTV News at Noon, streaming now. Well, the drive into work and school was slippery for some Hoosiers today. That glaze left behind by the first snow of the season causing delays for some school systems and made for an interesting drive on these side streets across much of central Indiana. Thanks for joining us this midday. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by with a check of our forecast this midday. And Todd, one thing we can all agree on this morning coming into work, it was cold. Yeah, Lauren, and that hasn't changed here as we head into the noon hour. In fact, today is going to be the coldest day of the week as far as high temperatures go. We still have to get through a very cold morning tomorrow before we can start to moderate things. All that snow video you saw was from uh, the eastern portion of the state where we had some accumulation. You can see through downtown Indianapolis and no snow on the ground. But you also, as you look off in the distance, can now see the clouds starting to break apart a little bit. It's been pretty cloudy so far, but we should start to work more sunshine in as the day progresses here, especially uh, in eastern locations where the clouds have been pretty thick. And you can see the dividing line here across the state between uh, the clearer skies off to the west and then all the clouds that are still from Indianapolis to the east. But as the storm system starts to pull away even further, uh, we'll start to see improvement in that category as well, where there will not be much improvement here in the temperatures. 28 right now in Peru, 32 in Bloomington, as well as Muncie. You factor in the wind, and it still feels like it's in the teens in Peru, Greenfield, as well as Richmond. 20 is what it feels like in Indianapolis. So you definitely have to bundle up. High temperatures go up another couple degrees as we work that sunshine in, but you'll still need to have the hat and the gloves handy and the heavier coat because wind chills will not get out of the 20s here for the day today. As I mentioned, a cold start to the day tomorrow, but then some relief in the temperature department. More on that, Lauren, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Metro police are still investigating the city's latest homicide. This happened just before 4.30 this morning on the east side of Indianapolis. Officers say they were called to an area near 19th and Emerson. There they found a person dead of a gunshot wound on the scene. So far, that's all the information investigators have released. Police are also investigating a shooting here at the West Side gas station. This sent a man to the hospital. Officers were called to the express pantry near 38th Street and High School Road just after 2 o'clock this morning. When they arrived, they found a man with a gunshot wound. We're told the victim was rushed to Eskenazi Hospital where he was last listed in critical condition. A man is dead after what investigators say was a fiery accident accident involving a snowblower. The Indianapolis Fire Department says 78-year-old Johnny Douglas died late Monday evening after his clothes caught fire. Fire crews say that the man was pouring gas into a snowblower inside a garage near East 43rd Street and North Sheridan Avenue. Investigators believe Douglas was smoking at the time and they believe the gas fumes ignited, setting his clothes and the snowblower on fire. Douglas was later pronounced dead at a hospital. While the surge in coronavirus cases has leveled off in some parts of Indiana over the past week, the surge in people dying with COVID-19 continues. Today, Indiana set another record for the most coronavirus-related deaths reported in a single day. 142 new deaths were reported by the state health department just moments ago. That pushes the state past 5,500 deaths since the start of the pandemic. New cases are also still high. The state reports more than 5,500 new positive tests today. Hospitalizations of people with COVID-19 also set another single-day record today with 3,460. And this is a sensitive topic with some eye-opening numbers. Suicide rates are up among young people. And while the pandemic may be one factor, researchers aren't sure if that's the only reason. Suicide attempts among children are up 39% this year. That's compared to just last year at this time. Hillary Blake is a clinical psychologist at Riley Hospital for Children. She says most who attempt suicide are diagnosed with depression. And she says the most important thing parents can do is talk openly about mental health. I think the biggest thing is don't be afraid to talk about mental health. It's here. There's not a stigma to it. Um, we're here to help you and, um, you know, do what you can to get these kids hooked up in services so we can prevent these numbers from increasing further. Yeah. Blake says that if you believe your child is showing signs of depression, you need to get them professional help as soon as possible.
Well, virtual learning is the new normal for every school here in Marion County now, as well as a number of other schools across central Indiana. This is bringing a lot of interest to Indiana Digital Learning School. Anne-Marie Dahill enrolled her daughter after she struggled with her school's e-learning back in the spring. The digital school is fully accredited and serves students across the state from kindergarten through 12th grade. An additional 2,000 students enrolled this year. We had families wanting to just be proactive and, and go ahead and just switch to a full-time virtual program because they felt maybe there was more consistency in that with the unknown ahead. I like it more because I learn more than what I did. Indiana Digital Learning School is accepting applications, but right now students can only enroll if other students leave. A federal ban on evictions is set to expire at the end of this month, but that order from the CDC does not apply to all cases where tenants are having trouble making their rent payments. There are local resources that can help. So if you live in Marion County, you have until 5 o'clock tomorrow evening to apply for rental assistance program. If you've already applied, you can check your application status by calling the number on your screen. That is 317-912-1260. For more information and how to apply, you can go to IndyRent.org. Now, if you live in the state of Indiana, but you're outside of Marion County, there's a different rental assistance program for you right now. However, you are putting put on a waiting list if you apply. Some landlords say they can't wait for that type of assistance to be approved. And for that and other reasons, many tenants are still facing eviction or legal action. Our Cornelius Hawker spoke to an organization that says it's important to know when to ask for help. Amy Nelson leads the Fair Housing Center of Central Indiana. Through the work the nonprofit does, she sees firsthand how the eviction moratorium is and isn't working. The eviction moratorium is proving to be difficult for people to be able to navigate, you know, effectively. Even though there's a federal moratorium on evictions, landlord-tenant disputes are still going to court, which could make it harder for the tenant to find housing in the future. It very much depends upon what the judge ultimately decides and at that point, you've already been served an eviction that's going to follow you around in your continued housing searches. But that's not the only trouble some tenants are facing. Earlier today, the Fair Housing Center announced a settlement against an Indianapolis landlord who was accused of sexually harassing a tenant over rent she couldn't pay because she lost her job during the pandemic. As part of the settlement, the landlord admitted to no wrongdoing, but will pay $45,900 to resolve the lawsuit. He'll also have to use a property manager to maintain all his rentals, having no direct contact with tenants. So I just, you know, have to applaud our client because she stood up and said, no, I'm not going to let this happen and spoke out. And because of that, then we were able to get this resolution. If you're having a hard time making ends meet and feel like you're being taken advantage of, or you just need help figuring out if you qualify for rental assistance, Amy shares this advice. What I encourage people to do is, of course, take advantage of, of the opportunities that are out there, such as if you qualify for the moratorium, make sure you're on the list um, related to rental assistance, but then also get legal advice. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. Cornelius, thank you. And you can find resources and help for rental assistance inside this story. Just visit our website, WRTV.com. Well, is there a last chance this year to pass badly needed help for millions of Americans? Next, the latest effort at the coronavirus relief and who would be left out if this new bill becomes law. Todd. And Lauren, it's a cold day in progress here across central Indiana. In fact, one of the coldest as far as high temperatures go that we have seen in quite a while. The good news is the coldest of the air will shift off to the east as we go throughout the next couple days. And we'll return to more seasonable levels. We'll talk all about it coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast. Welcome back. Well, it could be the last chance for a COVID-19 relief bill to pass before Joe Biden becomes the next president. It comes as millions of Americans could be cut off from some assistance just before Christmas. Today, a bipartisan group in Congress released a scaled down proposal that would total more than $900 billion in spending. The plan would not include another round of stimulus checks for some Americans, even though that was post pushed by both Republican President Trump and Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in past bills. Our action to provide emergency relief is needed now more than ever before. The people need to know that we are not going to leave until we get something accomplished. But the time to borrow money 
Maybe the only time to buy money is what, borrow money is when there's a crisis. And this is a crisis. We want to help people at this particular time. The new plan would extend some unemployment benefits for an additional four months. It would also provide money for state and local governments, which is a priority for Democrats. And it would impose a six-month moratorium on some coronavirus lawsuits against businesses. And that's a provision that was a priority for Republicans in Congress. Well, a vaccine will be here soon, but the work will be getting, the, getting people to take it. Next, we'll tell you about people who've been hit hard by the coronavirus who might be tough to convince when it comes to getting that shot. More news coming up just after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. As we've told you, the nation is inching closer to having a COVID-19 vaccine that's available. But the fear of taking the vaccine is very real for some Americans. Skepticism among African-Americans in particular has historical roots. Amber Strong with our partners at Newsy explains. The COVID-19 vaccine is nearing the finish line. Soon, we likely, almost certainly, are going to be vaccinating a portion of the individuals in the first priority before the end of December. As the chances of having a COVID-19 vaccine grows, so does the fear of taking that vaccine, particularly among African-Americans, a group hard hit by the virus. A new study from the NAACP and the COVID Collaborative, dubbed the largest of its kind, shows only 14% of black Americans trust that a vaccine will be safe. That's lower than other minority groups and down from previous studies. It's a concern for health officials like members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force who've tried to overcome mistruths about the vaccine. These vaccines have been tested in tens of thousands of individuals. There are independent data safety monitoring boards. There's going to be an independent transparent review. One problem, many in the black community don't trust government health officials. The study shows only 29% trust the FDA and only 4% trust the Trump administration, with one participant saying, quote, the CDC and FDA have been undermined by Trump and can't be completely trusted. Another problem, doctors are also competing with messages from social media. For example, a lie that black people couldn't catch COVID-19 at all went viral earlier this year. Doctors say online myths like this can do real harm. You know, if we, for example, think that African-Americans can't or don't get COVID, it may lead African-Americans uh, for us not to take preventative measures that we should be taking. Dr. Jennifer Cottle, who's gone viral for her social media post debunking COVID-19 health claims, says blacks have good reasons for the mistrust. If you think back historically, I mean, one of the most well-known examples given is the Tuskegee syphilis experiment where, uh, you know, black men were not given uh, treatment for syphilis when they could have been uh, in order for scientists and researchers to sort of see what the natural progression of the disease state would be. We have a long history of being abused, misused, exploited, lied to um, uh, uh, throughout history when it comes to health care. And there are still issues today. Still, she's encouraging her patients to follow the science and reputable sources. I say anything that you read, especially regarding health information, and especially health information that you may be making a decision uh, uh, regarding your health about, you need to take that to a medical professional. Now, researchers behind that study say in order to overcome the skepticism, health officials must admit to the horrors of the past and encourage science-based messages from black community leaders. Amber Strong, Newsy, Northern Virginia. Well, it wasn't just parts of Indiana getting their first snow of the season. The winter-like weather extending well south of here. Snow flurries fell as far south as Georgia. This is video from the Atlanta area, where December snow is much more rare than it is here. How about that, Todd? A lot of people seeing the flurries fly yesterday. And what can people expect as they head out the door this afternoon? Yeah, you know, Lauren, this was a massive storm. We were just on the far western edge of it. They had snow in Nashville, Tennessee as well. And Cleveland got hit hard today. And Pittsburgh saw quite a bit as well. And it's still snow in there. But here in central Indiana, as you mentioned, it's pretty quiet. That is the good news. It's just really, really cold out there. Here's a live look as you look off uh, to uh, the southwest past uh, Lucas Oil Stadium. And you notice some breaks in the clouds. We'll continue to see more and more in the way of sunshine here going forward throughout the day. It's probably going to be more of a gradual process for those of you. Uh, off uh, to the east but look at that temperature 31 degrees and Indy still below freezing at this hour and the wind chill value is at 20 in the city with a west wind at 16 miles per hour the winds 
Not quite as gusty as they were yesterday, but they're still obviously pretty strong all across uh, the area. And that's putting wind chills in the teens still in Greenfield and Richmond at 19. Feels like 15 in Peru. 26 is what it feels like in Bloomington. In Columbus, it feels like 21. So you definitely need to bundle up with all the appropriate gear if you're going to be out and about, especially for an extended period of time. High temperatures will get just above freezing in many locations. But again, with that wind, it's not going to feel like that if you are going to be out and about with those skies uh, decreasing. And here's what it's really going to feel like as we break it down for you hour by hour between now and midnight. Wind chill values will probably relax to about 25, but notice as we head into the evening hours, we're right back down to teens and 20s by about 8 p.m. That's because the skies are going to clear as soon as the sun starts to set, and that is going to result in our temperatures dropping off very, very quickly. There's the cloud covers kind of split in the state in half. You notice once you get towards Terre Haute and down towards Bloomington, plenty of sunshine, but the clouds are thicker towards Peru and Muncie. There's a few flurries to the north as well, but those won't cause any issues. There's what's left of the storm with the snow in Cleveland as well as the Pittsburgh area. This evening for us, closer to home, sunset at 521, clear skies quickly falling back down into the 20s all across the area. And then look at these temperatures as you wake up tomorrow morning. We're down to right around 20 degrees. I wouldn't be shocked if there's some actual temperatures in the teens tomorrow morning with wind chill values that could be getting down into the low teens or even into that 10 to 12 degree range. Even though the winds won't be that strong, when temperatures are that cold, it's easy to factor in those wind chills. Good news is we kind of turn the page tomorrow with lots of sunshine. Despite the cold start in the 20s, we'll warm things up into the low 40s for your afternoon highs. And then highs will stay in the 40s throughout the remainder of the week. That's pretty seasonable for this time of year. No big storm systems heading our way. Lauren, there could be a few flurries maybe on Thursday, depending on the timing, but overnight lows, they will continue to run a little bit below normal as we'll be below freezing every single day there, as you saw in your seven day planning forecast. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Well, don't forget, you can help make the Christmas season a little brighter for Central Indiana kids by donating to the WRTV Toy Drive. Drop off sites for new unwrapped toys are at used store locations all across Central Indiana. We'll also be collecting items at Indianapolis area Simon Malls in person this Saturday, December 5th for more information. Information, just go to WRTV toy, WRTV.com, that is, slash toy drive. And when we come back here, it is time for our pet of the week, and we'll take you to Georgia and see if you can give Georgia a forever home. There she is. We'll have that plus one final check of your forecast just after the break. Welcome back. It is Tuesday and that means it's time to try and find a home for our pet of the week with Indy Humane. And we may not have to, a midnight train to Georgia anymore, but we do have this Georgia. Georgia is seven years old and Indy Humane says that she would be a good fit for a quiet home where she can spend lots of time curled up with her family. Indy Humane says Georgia is bashful at the shelter, but very affectionate once she warms up. She is available with a $50 adoption fee. If you'd like to meet Georgia, you can set up an appointment at IndyHumane.org. Great pictures there. Here comes Duana Claus, here comes Duana Claus, right down Duana Claus Lane. Open up the freezer to deliver you the world's best ice cream. Coming at you again. Well, if The Rock says eat ice cream, even though it's cold outside, who are we to argue? Dwayne The Rock Johnson has delivered his second collection of holiday ice creams for the company Salt and Straw. It includes a new spiked eggnog ice cream made with Johnson's own Terramana tequila. There's also I Saw Mommy Kissing Duanta Claus. It's a chocolate chip cookie dough, milk chocolate caramel fudge swirled into whiskey ice cream base. The ice cream is only available online, and part of the proceeds go to World Central Kitchen. That's an organization that provides meals for people in need all across the world. It is cold outside, Todd, but that looks pretty good. No, I'm not going to lie. I love ice cream no matter <laughs> what time of the year it is, uh, Lauren. And I used to always go get at that shop in Broad Ripple and just walk down the Monon in the winter and you didn't even have to worry about it melting. So uh, one advantage, right? 35 today. It's a cold day. The fact that it's the coldest we have in our seven day planning forecast. Uh, temperatures will start to moderate at least for highs going forward here with no major storm systems heading our way. So it's a pretty quiet weather forecast. We just have to get through a couple cold mornings here with temperatures that will be down in the 20s. The only chance of maybe any precipitation would be on Thursday with a shower and or a flurry.
Todd, thank you, and thank you for joining us and making WRTV your choice for news. Come back here, join us for the news at 5 o'clock. Have a great Tuesday.